We recorded. Oh. Oh. All right, Q, talk to me about Metalworks. Can we start with uh, the two different kinds of mid, left and right? Tell me your opinions and where the um, positions are. Sure. The left is an aggressive mid versus the right is a slower mid, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interesting because the left is normally your territory. But due to how these crates are positioned, your closer high ground is actually inferior to the far high ground, which really doesn't make sense on like first look, but it's just how the map works. Because Soldier on this box is really, really strong. If the team's aggressing through left, like it just gets shut down really hard. Mm -hmm. So it's actually more aggressive sided mid to be playing left. Mm -hmm. um, and then generally, I like just having my Soldier's bomb. It's you really hard for your Soldier. Yeah, it's really hard for your soldiers to do good work um, while your team is left, because that's normally where they want to play. And if they jump in the right, they're feeding. So it's really hard to be useful as a soldier. A couple ideas, if you're not double bombing, is under the point rando ideas are always good. Um, oh, is that like a commit walk or just being annoying? Uh, being annoying and then jumping over the point into one of these two high grounds once your team starts committing. I see, yeah. So you're just trying to preserve your health early, kind of. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But in general, it's a much it's much easier on your soldiers just to double bomb. So I almost always tell them to double bomb unless I know they're capable enough to like not. It's kind uh, of the this the noob fail safe. It's like oh you're bad okay double bomb just do damage. <laughs> that actually um, this is completely unrelated and probably unimportant. Uh, but I did um I remember when I was studying for how to uh playoffs in Metalworks, I reviewed ten demos of advanced teams, and all of them played left and just double bomb their soldiers. And I was like, okay, I guess this is how everyone plays the mid. Yeah, it's kind of a noob failsafe. But these yep. are sort of the three locations you're really looking your soldiers to land on after a bomb. Uh, um, so you typically like having your soldiers kind of do poke bombs, not really land on a target, but land on I don't like position. suicide bombs because Valley, is, this is such a free way. So like better teams will have a pocket scout and a medic. They'll see these bombs happen and then they'll do this. Yeah, they'll just hold S. Yeah, and then... If you're trying to full commit and you land like there, you just die. But if you land on these other positions, it's actually a good position against this. Yeah. I also think and then, and then uh, if they stay in here, they get mulched anyway. A so. double bomb can be really difficult if the medic hits the surf. Then your both your soldiers can be in suicide situation. Still a good position. To show yeah, for it. Exactly. Yeah. It's really not worth all like all inning unless he's already hurt. For example, if there's a comm, medic took seventy, then you can send one soldier into kamikaze and the other one lands on one of the three alternative high grounds okay, but like I, I do kind of have a question here though um mm -hmm. off you sending this double bomb i think your positions look comparatively passive uh, well I mean, this is where they're playing and then they're playing here and then the bomb happens and then your scouts walk here what some behind their soldiers and then your demo has a couple options you can walk up these stairs left and be effective here and here or you can walk through under point and be much more aggressive in locking these spots out what do you think about the demo walking um, kind of more aggressive there onto the point? Kind I think like that's playing the stairs or the ramp. That's fine, but it doesn't accomplish anything different than playing a little more passive does back here. I think. Okay. Because when you play up here, you're looking to do the same thing as playing under. Yeah. Kind but of it's a much longer commit time, right? So mm -hmm. you have to walk all the way up through here, or risk walking up right where there could be a soldier sitting in elbow still. Yeah. So as a demo, you're really trying to be risk adverse. So looking to play on this point is really for a really, really late in the mid when you've like they're leaving Valley, then your demo can play point and look yeah, to lock these trying, things trying out in the peak out. house. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um And then if we're playing right side mid, I always want it to look something like this. Yep. So the flying soldier or sorry, the roamer here is just trying to hold his side, prevent anyone from really going behind. So what he's so doing well. here is he's playing this spam angle. That's why he positions here. Um, it's safe. He has good vision on elbow, and he has this really fat spam angle into the one way they can walk up right from. Yep. Um, and then as a demo, you're playing over here. You're always trying to maintain position of their walk up. So if they come right on you, you mulch them anyway. And then if they come left, you're looking to put spam as they walk up this little walkway. Yep. It's kind of a mirror mid. Both demos trying to prevent the other demo and medic from walking up. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Um, except it's not really a mirror. You're playing right to 
be in a passive position where your scouts are actively looking for these bombs and your soldiers are playing the spam slow them down game. Um, so their jumps happen, your scouts are mulching them, and your soldiers are playing control the slopes. And then your demos assisting whichever side they're actually going. And then by the time these soldiers die, you're hopefully at least 5v4, and then you just take a fight because both their soldiers are dead. Or if they go really, really far behind, like some soldiers will see they'll do a, a high bomb right off this, and they see a scout's playing on the shack. He has two options. He can either immediately U-turn onto this crate, or you can continue past this, like over the scout versus landing on the scout, and then he can try and go behind, which some soldiers opt for through a jump off left. So like he'll jump high, he'll see what's happening, and then he can like jump here off this wall, get in flank or something. Mm -hmm. How would that? Um. Okay. I mean, yeah. But yeah, you're really looking to play your scouts passive early, and then once these soldiers are killed or behind, then you're looking to walk up like right. Yeah, this is just looking for the high bomb, getting ready to duck into valley if the high bomb happens. Do you have a preferred mm -hmm. style? Do you prefer the left side? I prefer right. It's easier yeah, for me as a scout to control what happens on this mid, versus left is a lot more out of my hands. That's true. Um, I'm really forced just to throw my head into a bunch of people and hope I do enough damage. I hope your soldiers do enough damage. Well, it's a combination of the two. The soldier bombs rarely kill anything. It's normally your soldier bumps jumps and then you're looking to clean up or do damage with your soldiers. That's why it's really important you don't bait bombs. I mean, this is one of my favorite bombs on Miz particularly, because you can get both soldiers up to 300. Double yeah, high bombs, you, 300 soldiers. Yeah, if they both roll out pocket, they both have 300. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Any questions? Mm, no, I think that's pretty solid on the mid. Cool. Uh, um, do you want to talk about sack variations in a second? I think we should... I, I don't know. This is kind of interesting because I have some things I want to talk about, but I don't really think they're like good for a basic, uh, basic kind of like questions. Uh, so I think we should cover like the fundamentals first. Um, um, I mean we okay. all know how to so hold do second you, passive. And do we want to talk about holding mid, or are you okay why, with how holding mid works? Why don't you talk about um, <laughs> the different ways to push and what what the different you think are, look like? Yes. Yeah, sure. so, so let's say I have like 60% add, uh, what the different mm -hmm. ubers look like in terms of if I think this way is better for trying to catch the medic and this way is better for trying not to use. So, so normally the best way to talk about ubers is to talk about doors. So we're the aggressive team, but I'm looking at it defensively. Mm -hmm. So when I say push Goose. through like left alley, I'm talking about that. Yep. Right. It's like the pushing team's yeah, left, I not gotcha, my defensive gotcha. left. So. Main is just like always bad, unless they're like four dead, and then you can try and get through main. But there's never an uber through main where I'm like, wow, that was really good. Because uh, nine out of ten times, this medic's going to be playing in the shutter door. Even if you jump a demo through this door, he just closes it and then walks away. Um, true. You got to get so really, really in there. Yeah, it's very difficult to close this gap and like fast enough for this medic to really be caught if he's not AFK. Like some medics are just slow, and then you can do that to them. But like not NPCs won't ever die to that. Or, or if their medic's kind of out of position. But that's right, or if their medic's forward fault. or something. Yeah. yeah, but in general, defensively, you're playing in the shutter um, for that exact reason, and that's hard to get caught from main. Um, for example, you gave on the 60% add, door I'm looking at is underpass. Um, reason being is alley is really far away from anything significant. This feels more like a dry fight type door because you get good vision pretty early. You have, we were walking towards a high ground. This feels very dry fight, and you're also very far away from wherever their medic is going to be. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to convert this ad through killing their medic, um, I'm looking double scout under. Because um, even if the medic's out far right here, on double scout speed, you can catch this dude in right on double scout, and like you can pop here and kill this guy in this doorway and like that's, commit through or kill a demo. Decently difficult to force a, a medic coming lower if you're not ready. Q, yes. Q, I'm not going to lie. Everything there, I 100% agree with, and I I, I call. So that's yeah, kind of interesting. A, yeah, it's a good Uber. Um, if you are gonna convert a 60% Uber ad through Valley, and you're not holding, um, you, you pretty to much have to double sticky a demo. Yeah, and but the way the demo sticky the demo jump is doing is he's not jumping into shutter, he's jumping into main. Um. And your yeah. scout meets him around here, and then He's you're trying, trying to use the rest of your Uber to beat them here. Like, this is the timing you're trying to beat, is to the shutter door. What if they just go out the so, other side? Um, they normally won't. 
It's also farther, and so the demo can still sticky them. Because if you beat them here, you beat them to that door too. Because he's just not shooting them, he's shooting the floor. He's just littering here or here. Okay. So they can't leave, and then you kill them. Mm -hmm. But in general, I find the double scout uber significantly better. But that's sort of a different idea you can try and take is if you push, if you take a dry through left and they're lingering too long in this shutter door, do not be afraid to take this uber. You can even pop through here if you really want to, like if the demo's watching it or something, and that's why they feel safe. You can just pop through this door on a scout demo and just walk this uber into seven of them who are here. I agree. Yep. I, I was thinking pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, where that left side, if you can take it dry, that's perfect without using. But if you get to the point and they're still trying to play in their shutter, the wraparound is the perfect. Uh, they're all caught in. Yeah, they just don't get to leave. Um, that's really how pushing into second works. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do pushing into mid? Sure. Um, pushing into mid is kind of interesting because almost all variations lead to alley. <laughs> um, so when you're pushing under here, so the way I like tr getting into valley here is I put everything but a soldier there. And then I have my Romer and my Fling Scout clear alley together, and then they meet up with us here. So me, demo on your my Demo, and my Medic are lower. My Romer and my Fling Scout are going alley. My Pocket is watching house so we don't get pinched without vision. And we're walking through lower. Once we've successfully cleared all the default traps you have to be careful of and shit, like in the rocks or whatever, mm -hmm. by the time you're here, as a main call, you have to make a decision. Um, are we going to try and walk through this door here, or are we going to take it all the way through house in the top left? Um, and a good indicator of which one of those two you are doing is if you have a demo sitting here with his pipes out, you can bet 9 out of 10 times there's stickies right there. Um, right? Yep. So? Or on the rock. Sure. But on the rock is easy. You're really worried about these because clearing this is time consuming because you have to commit to this baby shack like this and then shoot rockets at it like this. Um, and then you're opening yourself up to pipes and spam. So there's no really good way of clearing this trap. Um, the best way of dealing with that trap is avoiding it. So if you come here and I see a demo sitting here with pipes out staring at me, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> um, your pocket can clear the traps. I might be here if he's huge brain. Um, and then the idea is you're peeking top left. They're playing top right. And you're looking to get through here and take the fight from the top left. Um, and if they stay in too long, you jump a demo into their bottom house. So demo scout medic coming top left, everything else going alley, two soldiers playing very slow. Right? I like having one soldier like here and another soldier here or something. They're just playing slow spotting for the people who are walking through house. Um, and if they're overstaying here and you have the ad, the idea is you can pop through on a demo, one sticky jump into lower, but he lands here. And then again, he's not shooting them. He's preventing them from being where they want to go. And he just litters here. And then they can't leave through banana. And then you have an Uber behind them and two soldiers on high ground in front of them. And they just die. I call that banana. I call that lunchbox. I just call it elbow banana. Mm -hmm. Why do you call this lunchbox? I don't know. That's what I've heard. It is a lunchbox. There's not even a lunchbox in here. That's a horrible name. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Uh... Have you, uh, what about Ubers where you want to try to catch or kill? Seems like their medic's kind of on point. Um, it's very difficult to catch or kill because they just have such good vision of you. Um, you can try a lower main, but again, good medics are just going to be S. So it's very hard to catch medics who are playing, expecting to die to an Uber. <gasps> um, so oftentimes it's really better to hold. And then punish overstaying. But if you are going to try and do an idea where you're like trying to catch fuck? a medic, you Sorry. can, you're good. You can come into house and then hug this left wall like this to deny them vision and then pop on a demo around this corner like this. Yeah. And get through into them top left. But again, it's very difficult to kill a medic and a scout because they see that demo and they're like, okay. And then they walk away this way. And then your demo doesn't, just doesn't have an angle to kill your medic anymore because you just mm -hmm. hug this left wall and he has no engagement. I mean, realistically, you're your demo is going to need to catch him before he gets into lunchbox or banana or elbow. It's... Your demo? Yeah. So, like, the defensive team demo? I mean, I uh, guess. Sorry. I mean, uh, sorry. The, the, offensive the aggressive team, demo. Yeah, the aggressive yes. demo is going to need to be... If the medic catch gets them, yes. out through lunchbox, he's he's free. It's, yeah, he's free. Exactly. <laughs> For something like they're way more aggressive, closer to the point, probably. Anyway, yeah, I think that mostly makes sense. Uh, 
Do you ever, so if, if the demo isn't in that situation that you mentioned earlier with his pipes out, do you try to dry push off the right side? Yeah, so if their demo's dead or something, it's actually pretty easy to bully teams out of this high ground. Oh, yeah. um, again, because you have demo ads, so if they're too close, you can just sticky, pop, get in them, don't let them leave through lunch. Um, so you'd use the Uber to kill the demo? Uh, no, it's only, I'm trying to, I'm Ubering if they're playing too far in and they're in the demo jump. Um, but if for whatever reason, like they don't have a demo and they're still in, like we're talking about, that's where I would just jump a demo into them top, right? I see. But most of the time, what's going to happen is just because they know they're going to lose before it happens. If teams overstay, so like what will happen is they'll be down a demo. They'll have a soldier sitting right here, like a scout right there, and they'll be looking this way. And as soon as they see the beam walk around this corner, they see a beam attached to a scout or something, right? There's a scout there, and there's mm -hmm. a beam on the scout or something. Um, they're going to send the soldier that's on this thing, Batman. high bombing in, and then just walk away. Yeah, um, That's the that most common really pattern. Cool. Um, and if that's happening, again, as a scout, you're paying attention to this nerd, and then oh, yeah, just I mean, don't let that guy kill your team. Your medic should definitely motivate that. Mm -hmm. And then you're just waiting. If that guy doesn't bomb, then you just take right for free. Um, you jump a soldier up here. You establish your high ground. And if they then want to take a fight from low ground, you let them. And then you win the fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Last Ubers? Sure. Oops. I actually have a lot to talk about last, but let's start with just uh, last Ubers, directions you take um, Uber. Couple defaults, um, converting big ad, you have two doors, you can go right to main. Um, demo scout, lead demo, demo jumps through, um, scout follows. You want almost always want to end right because you have players coming from left here who can control these boxes and then you're trying to mulch them here. Um, nice pinch. And own the exactly. Point. And then if you're going left, left on really big ads, like 50 plus, you want to go left, left and just mulch them. You actually lead through on scout. You pop on scout through. No stickies. You pop on demo. You're through. Um, Do you ever try to milk this far left? No, 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 no. That's way too greedy. Um, if you lose a scout here, you've just ruined 50% ad. You just have to pop through this door. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you're through, you leave your demo here and then you tank your scout around this side of the back point and it flushes the rats either into spawn or into left where your demo should be ready to shoot sticky the point and then your soldiers are jumping in from main and you're right as the aggressive team and jumping into this last mulching things that your scout has flushed through behind point to front okay hi q how you doing hi doug uh what about um do you ever do anything through the main shutter not really. It's just worse. Um, I pretty much completely agree. <laughs> For starters, the stickies are almost always in the shutter. Yeah. And so that's why coming left is really good, is because as like a pocket scout, what I'm doing is I'm going ahead of my team, I'm hugging this wall, and I'm shooting the stickies that are on this main door so my soldier can walk through this main door. I'm in spam during the Uber, reload, and then jump in post. Um... So right. that's what I like doing. That's why I like left to main is because you can get the stickies off the store and it just enables your soldier to spam, help his flank, do passive support ideas, shoot the point to get the stickies off it before he jumps it, stuff like that. Uh, real, t real quick, can you uh, tell me what your favorite sentry spots are here for our last holding? Sure. Um, underneath of the bridge is a good one. In that box corner is a good one. If you want to have a pyro on it, you can just put the gun here. And then your pyro sits on top of it, um, and his air blast just directs anything that's coming into it from all the doors away towards main. Hmm. So that's actually a pretty good funnel. But if you don't want to do a... I don't think it's particularly good, um, just because they just walk up to it. Like, it's not one of the last that's so humongous that you can just, like, you don't... For, like, process, if there's... Uh, oh, what's the map I'm thinking of? It's not process, it's the other really big last. Sunshine. If you have uh, a pyro and a gun on the opposite side of the point that you've Ubered to, it's just impossible to get to it if you pop into the wrong side. Well, this one's small enough where there is a pyro, you just hold a little bit, get really close, and then you start shooting it with your stickies and pipes and your scout. Um, 
so you don't burn ammo on the walk-in as a demo. You usually hold so you're a little bit closer, and then you start dumping with your scout, and the pyro just can't beat the intervals anymore, right? Because when you're far away, you can keep yeah. up with the intervals. But when you're closer, you just mag dump faster than he can air blast, and then he dies <laughs> the with the gun effect. if he's still playing on it. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, hmm. You want right. to see a secret tech uber that no one does that I think might possibly be good? All right, but I'm sharing um, it. That's fine. It's a double soldier through left with a scout follow, so it's a three-man. Huh. Um, the first thing you do is you lead through on a soldier, and then I've he seen comes this right spot. here. Yeah. And just completely locks out right side. The other soldier and the scout, and then taking the rest of this uber and ending it on right, um, where your demo comes in through main, and just like spamming behind this uber while it's happening. And then your flank scout is also playing with your demo main, and then you're just ignoring the right um, yeah, I was going to say, you risk having the right soldier bomb your demo. I guess, but that's why the, the flank scout's thing. here. He's yeah. paying attention to this, and then your demo's here. And then similar idea is you've completely locked them out of left, because if they're ever going to try and commit on the soldier, they have to do this. Yep. Um, and then they get mulched. And then if they ignore that soldier, they have to walk through demo stickies and a soldier and a scout. Um, so this is and kind of interesting. Uber. Exactly. Do you have, any, tech you have any opinion on the super high light above the point? I mean, if you're trolling, but like, <laughs> yeah, not really. It's generally just not good because anyone, if you're above main, you're doing this. You peek this door and you, is there an idiot there? No, cool. Okay. And then you clear everything else. It's just, it's like clearing Batman in mid. Yeah. All right. It's gotcha. just something you start uh, doing talk and to it me, negates the spot. Talk to me about your sacks then. Stalemate situation, um, even Ubers. Starting from where? What point? Uh, we can start from last, second to last. So from second into last, you're sacking? Yep. I typically see um, that one right from main quite frequently. Yeah, this one's always good. It's a classic. Um, again, you're spotting for a gun. If there's a gun, you double up your soldiers and spam it. Um, yeah, if there's no gun, then If there's the no spawn. gun that defends, like the gun's underneath the point, it's not important, the bridge. Yeah, that is true. But that's what I'm saying is you're peeking for this gun spot, mm -hmm. and you're peeking for that gun spot. And if you see either of them, you rotate both soldiers into right with a beam. And then they upwards, they bully this guy, they can like jump through in the sky or whatever. They're just healthier and more of them, so he leaves. And then you double up your soldiers, and then it's dead by the time they do that, because there's two of them. So you have the time it takes to shoot down a gun. Yep. And then the gun's dead. Um, and then you send some sort of sack. But the default that's usually pretty good is here. Right, and then your scout is just running in from a different door. Yeah, say Generally this, not uh, main. Um, he man. can trail the soldier or something. Oh, I always, always two man. The lobby, the reason metal works, I think, is bad, is this lobby is so huge. Good teams can really abuse you trying to push out into their second. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, but, uh, we'll go over that in a second. But yeah, you typically send two mans here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you can send a scout. Pretty much any doorway. Um, if they give you left, take left. But something to be wary of as a flank scout is if they have a pocket doing this or like a rum or yeah, something, you just get in. negated. So peek that pretty early before the sack starts happening. Like you're, the soldier's getting buffed, just throw a shoulder here. And if you don't see anyone, then you can try running through it. Um, if you do see someone, then you just trail the soldier. He jumps through here. And then you're the scout and you hug this left wall and you pop around this corner. Yep. Solid, solid points. Um... What is your opinion on Sniper here? I think Sniper is good. Um, you treat it a lot like you treat Sewer and Process when you're sniping. Um, you have your demo locking out the main, aka Choke. Um, you have your demo playing over here. Stickies here. Put stickies on this box. You can put stickies here. You can put stickies in a lot of different spots that are really good, like on the other side is of the spoiler. Like passive stickies to defend himself? Yes. He's defending, he's just watching left to make sure while the sniper is peeking this main and right angles, things aren't pushing through left. And then you have a medic here who's tanking a soldier who's here, who's doing this for the sniper who's holding back here. And then you have your roamer just head glitching on right. Hmm. Um, and then you have your loose scout playing rotate on whatever's getting spammed. Um, if demo's getting shot at, he rotates oh, left and helps the demo. The demo. And if things are happening right, he can support the sniper through right here. He's just mm -hmm. playing rotate. I think it's really interesting because typically when I see a lot of teams play with the sniper, a lot of people overextend, and the sniper ends up not getting his shot because a player sacks or dies. 
But yeah, yeah. The, the way you put it, basically everyone is playing defensive, and the only real avenue for damage is the sniper, but the entire team's playing around him. That is correct. And then what happens is, the reason you do that and you want zero deaths, while you give your sniper one good shot, like the first shot on sniper is the most important, right? Yep. So he takes that shot, and then what <laughs> happens is that the medic will start holding here if he's not dumb. Say. Yep. And then that sets up a really free stack through uh, left main. And so what happens is, after you set up the sniper takes a shot, miss or make. If he makes, then you go. If he misses, the medic holds close. And then what you do is you rotate sniper to a more defensive angle where he's just solo holding this right like this. Um, and then you keep a demo main. He stickies himself off and then can put pressure on things through here. And then you double soldier medic left. Um, pocket is holding this door. Romer and scout are pushing up into here. Um, and then you're doing this. Yep. I was gonna say, like, uh, I was gonna ask you about how to break that hold, but you have a pretty, pretty good idea. Um, and yeah, and then people just don't expect the sniper to be holding this angle, so a soldier will peek, get popped, and then Back the up. sniper has a much more free. Well, normally if the sniper's holding the angle, he dies, like he just gets killed, mm -hmm. and then the sniper can start peeking this deep right more aggressively because he's effectively already angle. traded himself. Yeah, and it's a really annoying angle. Even if he doesn't full pink this, even the most shallow, this is really annoying. I mean, you have but to then respect you can, he can, You have to. You can continue clearing through the point, and then like you can catch a lot of stuff on these angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I think I pretty much agree with all of that. I mean, actually, about it for like sacking. That's good into that last like that. Um, I talk sacking in a second. Sure. Oh, actually, so, hang on, hang on. You just sent a two man. Uh, what's your typical hold? I sent a two man. Um, I have my medic here with a scout. I have my demo um, playing more passive. I normally like my demo setting up some sort of sticky on a shutter here and then playing like this. Oh, really? Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. I really don't like my demo being in a place where he can die because what they're going to do is they're going to Uber a scout around this corner, take an exchange, and then look for the demo. Um, and if your demo is anywhere that's not either here or bridge, and then he just yeah, gets like the forces a flash. I don't like the demo bridge because he can be locked out by a bomb um, versus when he's playing alley, he has access to everything that matters. He can peek this like this, or he can peek main like this, and then he has a whole place to surf to, right? Uh, versus if an aggressive bomb slips through. Um, wait, hang on, but uh, walk me through positions one more, because I, once more, because I missed it. Is your scout with your medic or your soldier? Uh, both. Okay, so, so well, your scout is here. Um, the reason being, you can, if you want to take a soldier exchange here, you can. I normally, it's okay, but it tends to not be good, just because it's really hard to juggle everything. Um, the scout will get through, and then force the medic who's here, and then your soldier scouting, and there's no way for as a soldier for you really to force flashes. You can jump behind, which is okay. But there's yeah, five other or four that. other players you're jumping into, so, and it's really hard to get behind in this situation. So I almost what, uh, what I like here is I have the soldier medic in the corner, and then the demo mm -hmm. scout on the bridge, and the scout watches lower as well. I mean, you can do that. It's just really, really passive. Like you're banking everything on a really good exchange. Um, yeah. Right, because what happens is while that exchange is happening, there are players here baiting this demo debt, and once your demo's debts, it's it's free. And then they walk through the left, and then you're having to deal a two-way fight. Um, versus if your demos are more towards this beam like this, you forego right a little bit more um, and play it as a recollapse. So you're playing more heavy on left. All right, your demo's staying out of this uber. If the exchange is good, he can come back in. If the exchange is bad, he's safe enough to where he can just be doing support damage as they walk away and killing things that are too aggressive, hitting iron bombers, sticking the floor as he walks away, yeah. stuff like that. I just think it's a little dangerous because they can come in to you through lower if you're not fast enough leaving a lost fight. Going through this lower? Uh, all the way underpass, kind of like underneath the bridge there. Yeah. Oh, here? I mean, I guess. But like, you're a demo man, so you can just like sticky that doorway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As a demo man leaving alley, this is like the most secure you can be, because right here you're sticking this line, and then you're walking out like this. I'm saying with not, the beam. If, not if they beat you there, but yeah, I agree. I mean, how do they beat you though? Because you're playing left already, so you know where they're coming. So what? The, you're, there's an exchange happening left as a demo here. You're saying like the flank going behind, mm -hmm. and then you just well then you, you play you just in. Forward. Yeah. yeah. 
Also, your flank should be dealing with uh, your, excuse me, your pocket. Should have a good idea of what's going on in right for you. Um, you can play here or there as pocket. I like either. All right. But yeah, the really the default really safe way to play this is what you're describing is you do scout demo here, um, and then you do a soldier exchange over here, like that. Um, Too much. I like the demo a little more aggressive, but yeah. Sure, but some variation of this idea where there's an exchange happening on a soldier in this doorway, and then you have your demo locking out these two doors with your scout. Uh, yeah. That's pretty They're much what I work. normally see. Um, but anyway, yeah, but, uh, I, I think um, the proposal you had is perfectly fine as well. I think it's pretty interesting. What, uh, what about um, your traditional sack into second? Into second? Mm hmm um, this sack is all about building patterns and then breaking them. So, like, a really common one is you fake on the first soldier bomb, right? And then the second one is the one who dies. Um, like, so there's a fake and then this guy commits, right? But yeah. after Double you do that, like, two times, um, what I find that's actually really strong is you send both at the... You send one and then send the second one immediately after, but the fake is the second one. Because um, oftentimes they'll hold ammo on the first guy because they expect him to, like, hmm. die. A curve. Or, like, exactly, excuse me, uh, what's it called? Fake. But then what happens is they hold ammo on the first, but he's actually full committing. And then the dude behind him is sending spam rockets on top of that damage as he leaves under or alley or whatever. Yeah. Is that the main sack you use? Um, yeah, I also like similar idea where you do some sort of aggressive couple f that idea through uh, what this is called alley and then like the third or fourth yeah. time is It's the fake comes from alley and then the dude dies under like this. Yeah, except good <laughs> Like a good jump. Yeah, yeah something like that um, You can sneak pretty far there if their scout mm -hmm. isn't doing a good job paying attention yeah, Especially because they're gonna be staring at this place because you send a fake here they expect the, the second guy to come over it the second guy never comes from over him he goes from under you're a big fan of fake uh these fake outs oh yeah you kind of have to so like uh i like I, I don't think the soldier bomb is bad if you have a soldier spamming from lower as well so so instead of you have one soldier go for that bomb um but and then you have the other guy goes. play under and spam this door yeah i'm pretty big fan of that i also think um more often than not, I've seen a lot of fast bombs through the choke work. I'm not sure what the skip is, but just, yeah, straight through this. Some soldiers do this skip and it works pretty uh, well. Oh, is it back here? I don't know what this jump is. I've never seen, like, the soldier actually set up for this jump, but I, I've seen one or two times it works pretty well. I don't know. I just feel like your scout should be here, and then he just jumps in front of that guy and presses mouse one, and then he goes into the stickies on the doorway. But if you're putting a lot of pressure into alley, you generally have a really hard focus on alley, and choke kind of is a uh, lethargic. All the reactions I, I was on there is pretty slow. That's a good mix-up. I like it. <laughs> uh, let me th think what else. I, I already said this. I really hate the sniper peeking that door. I think it's really difficult to deal with, because the sniper can watch the flank from that door. Uh, when you're the offensive team, and he, mm -hmm. if he ever gets to bridge, realistically, you're risking your medic's life. Also true. Um, but Sniper is actually an interesting pick, because it's also really good defensively here, because it, like, single-handedly locks down, like, alley and valley just by being here. And, and he, like, guarantees so a pick. on a Sniper back there if he's playing mm -hmm. on the kind of, like, porch. And then you have a soldier standing on him, and then he just has just the sight line. Yeah, I mean, and then you can choke up here too with another soldier another to get thing. a good spot. The sniper lower can actually snipe into the shutter when you're looking at second. Yes. That's why I was saying I hate the sniper. Dealing with a sniper on second as a medic. Yeah, it's very difficult. So that's the large um, part where I want to try playing the Gibbler back in house. You can do that. If, what do, as what do like you think an anti-sniper. Yeah. What do you think is the uh, biggest weakness of this hold? as the with the sniper or against the sniper uh, i just mean in general but yeah against the sniper mainly i think uh the weakest part of this hold is alley and that's why all the sacks come through it um so this would but probably look like your your demo would be a lot closer to alley uh you'd have against a the sniper 
Uh, I'm trying to think. So, if you're playing this hold, your medic's back in house. Your demo's kind of playing here on point, uh, presumably being tanked. Yeah. I think your soldier has to hold a little bit more aggressive close to the door, at least on high ground, spamming it. So probably yeah, right there is what I was thinking. Your pocket scout. I'm not really sure where your pocket scout would play. Maybe on like a shed thing, a little bit to your right behind you. Uh, that's a little too passive. It's kind of interesting. I think your flank still plays your flank. Your pocket scout kind of has to travel around. Oh, watch lower. Yeah, your pocket scout should still be watching lower. Uh, so yeah, and then your flank would just play your flank. I think there's a lot less pressure coming bridge here, but you cover alley a lot better. Interesting. I just feel like you open yourself up to sniper though, right? Sniper. If I see alley? this as a sniper, yeah, I just deep peek this back angle like this, and then how? What does your demo do? Hide behind this door, or this wall, and then I just send a soldier over it, and then your medics just in a nice little cubby hole to get shit on. Hmm. That's fair. I don't really typically see too many snipers peek alley, to be honest. I but think yeah, alley is really good because there's no stickies you have to be afraid of until you get over there. And so this whole thing is completely sticky free, so you can scope in and just wiggle your way up this wall. Yeah, I was going to say. Angles. There's that. I dropped a, that trap there hugging the left wall once. I don't know. Yeah. If you know but, so, yes, there's this one, and then there's this one. Yeah, I, I dropped to that one, the second one. You also have to be careful of this forwards wall. People forget that they'll put stickies here, and then they'll walk like this and get popped this way. That's and a pretty also, crazy trap. <laughs> putting traps right here is also really good, because someone has to clear this and to peek into this door, and then he gets popped from behind there. So those are other good passive, traps you need to be yeah. careful. Anyway, uh, <coughs> what are we missing? Um, sacks into mid? It's not really uh, a, your counter sack into mid. Um, yeah. But again, the counter sack in general is you either take valley or house with the beam, and then you send the sack from where the beam is. Yeah, um, try to get close some, and pressure it. Yeah. Some people like doing that. I don't know what the lineup is, but I've seen soldiers do like, and then they speed shot through this bottom. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's yeah, from yeah. a little farther back like this. I mean, that's the... That's the fast rollout. You can do a fast rollout metalworks like that. Yeah, it's like that except a little forward. Mm -hmm. And then you can play like in there. Have you ever but had to Yeah. Have you ever had to deal with that queue? The fast rollout on your demo on Metalworks? No. I I mean not really. But the demo is not so fast that he's like unprotected like as a scout rolling out back door, you're only like out of this for an extra half second because you winger jump here and then onto Shack. And so in general, unless my demo just insta dies, I clean that guy up. Mm -hmm. I've barely had to deal with the forward uh, fast rollout. Yep. But I imagine your demo just plays slightly more passive in the early. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, I think that's pretty much all the questions I had when it works. Ironically, I feel like our opinions just aligned on most things. Uh, yeah, it's probably a good sign. Oh yeah. Maybe it means I watch too many Metalworks videos. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I, don't know. I don't really have anything else. Yeah. I think that's about it. Uh, thank you. Sure. Thank you, thank you.